Hey, this is John Taylor, running back for the Indianapolis Colts, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Jason Moore, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers podcast for Tuesday, mm. October 6th. Welcome in 2020 party people. Got a great show for you today. It's an important one. Heading into week five, waiver show. Some names to discuss, debate. You've got kind of two kinds of waiver pickups. The the one-week rental, and then we can discuss whether some of these guys have long-term value for your fantasy roster. Hopefully both. Yeah, that's the, uh, the kind of player I'm willing to spend a little bit more on. We have our streaming quarterbacks for week five on the show today as well, so you can pick them up tomorrow and uh, some news to discuss some injury news and that's going to I mean I saw a a, a Google doc or a, a spreadsheet of the top 25 by average draft position yesterday oh good and I think Jake Seeley posted it on Twitter and he highlighted all the players that were either currently out or had been out for some period of time and it was a battle to find who was healthy it was not even a battle to find. It was just unbelievable how many injuries have taken place to affect or disrupt your team. I, I, yeah, I tweeted out, if you took the consensus. Now, look, your order may have varied. I'm just saying the ADP, uh, if, you went, if you took the running back one, the running back two, the wide receiver one, two, or three, so far you have a bad pick for your team. Like that that's how insane this has been. And what's so funny is I've seen people going back and forth of uh the zero R B people yeah. are like I mean, look at what's happening. Of, Evidence. Yeah, like of course you should have gone wide receiver heavy. I except my zero R B team was Julio Jones and Devontae Adams. <laughs> yeah. That is not working out for me. And then the people are like, Yeah, look, wide receivers suck because I got I got Camara and, yeah. and <laughs> like no it if you don't have these this, three running backs this year has you could you can make a narrative or an argument for any draft strategy it, this year it's through why, four weeks. It's why we say zero R B, W R, Q B yeah, or tight end. That's right. It's the only strategy that works. Um <laughs> No, I mean the the reality is this is why the Foot Clan, those of you listening who stick with us through the year are gonna win championships. It's because the majority of your league is dealing with insanity. And it's going to be who makes the good waiver wire pickups, who makes the right start sit decisions, uh, who grinds through the year and has a little bit more knowledge than the than the casual loser in your league. That's right. Take some injuries, mix in a little bit of COVID and schedule disruption, and it's a recipe for you to win a championship. All right. Twitter at the FF Ballers, the Fantasy Footballers dot com for all the rankings and tools. Join the Foot dot com the community. We had two Monday night football games last night, the Chiefs over the Patriots 26 to 10, and the Green Bay Packers with a oh, very man. hand handily uh won 30 to 16 victory. Whew. So, uh, the Chiefs game it got off to a rather slow start. Seemed like it was halftime instantaneously, but you can't really hold the Chiefs down forever. Uh Patrick Mahomes ends up getting his and you just didn't get enough from Hoyer or Stidham in that game. Hoyer was awful. His pocket presence zero dot zero according to my statistical measures. I mean, he did not know people were around him at any moment in time. Uh, you were let let me get your temperature on a player here. All right, Clyde edwards alaire sixteen for sixty four last night, uh, three for twenty seven through the air, taken off the field in the red zone. At times, he has been very dynamic, very good. Through four weeks, how do you feel? I asked you this last week, so how do you feel right now? I'll answer because uh, I, th I think Mike answered last week, and I, I'm a little bit 
cooler on him in the sense of the the high upside, the gigantic games, whether we see them or not. But you're still thrilled in the sense that you've got a really solid weekly plugged in uh, guaranteed floor for a player. And then in, he's going to get touchdowns through the year. That's one of the things that we know. And so in those games, if his floor is high, then you've got a really safe option until whenever he gets touched down, he's going to be fine. But I will say this, the the top five, the excitement for having, you know, what we see when we watch Dalvin Cook, what we see when we watch Alvin Kamara, these guys where they are truly electric. I, I haven't seen that from him, the player, as much. But I do think the role in that offense is just so safe and secure that I'm happy with it. I'm just not ecstatic. RB13 on the year so far through four weeks, which obviously that's nothing to be ashamed of, but he was drafted inside the top five in some leagues. And uh, more excited about Clyde edwards the rest of the season over Jonathan Taylor, I assume? Yes, I, I am. Look, RB13 when you have one touchdown. But that's on, part on of my year. question, right? Because hey, if yep. they pull him off the field in the red zone, touchdowns are going to be less frequent than if they left him there. Uh, yes, <laughs> you, it is better to be on the field in the red zone. But look, the... I still believe that the touchdowns are coming. You don't see a running back averaging over 20 opportunities a game and not scoring touchdowns, it, especially in the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, I mean, that, Devin Singletary is sure. an example of a player like that. Uh, I just want to be realistic with him. I'm not yeah, trying no. to poo-poo on him. I want him on my fantasy roster. But if he's being taken off the field, not getting in the end zone, his one touchdown was a long run, right? It was a 20-plus yard run, yeah. which reminds me of Singletary. I, so. uh, uh, to me, watching the, the the Kansas City games, it's just been the way that things have bounced. I mean, are like, are you are you upset with Patrick Mahomes? I mean, Patrick Mahomes uh, yet again was not a tw top twelve quarterback, and I think that if you take the temperature on people, there no, I'm just, I'm just going to stay the course of Patrick Mahomes. That is fully where I am with Clyde edwards alaire If they if someone drafted edwards alaire and they are disappointed in the running back thirteen through a week four, whew, Go get him. I will absolutely trade for him. All right. Uh, what else stood out from that specific game? You got Damian Harris with 17 carries, 100 yards, had a big 41 yard run in this one. Uh, Rex Burkhead had 11 carries, James White three carries, but back in the lineup with seven receptions, which led the team. Yeah, it was. It was uh, Sony Michelle uh, was out. That wasn't something we had talked about prior. Um, and so that means this really Damian Harris is inheriting that role. And it, he wasn't just out. He was put on the IR. That's right. So he will be out for uh, the next two games at least. Um, and then, you know, Darren Damian Harris inherited that role. He was... <laughs> he was, he looked good. He was okay. I mean, Sony's looked as good. I mean, Sony's been okay this year. I, I you know, uh, are we'll you excited? About, uh, I, ha I think it's a little bit of fool's gold. I think the Sony IR provides an opportunity, but we know around the goal line it'll be Cam Newton when Newton's back. And I you're still trying to gamble with three different players so there are other running backs that I'm going to prioritize over Damian Harris uh but that's also because last week I was saying you should stash Damian Harris yeah and, no you've and, been on it see what happened you deserve credit for that too because I, I didn't expect the IR situation for someone oh, I didn't expect that either but that's also the Patriots you got to expect the unexpected yeah. man you got to be ready yeah which makes starting their running backs very difficult it that's fair. It, that's why I say he's not the priority add this week if you are if you are hurting at the running back position, but he needs to be on your bench and see what happens. You know who doesn't impress me? Nikhil Harry. No. No. Like, no not, body control, no 50-50 ball presence. I don't – I mean, he got the touchdown late in the game, which was basically a falling over touchdown. I don't know. I'm just not impressed with his ability – with the size and stature that he has – to not be a difference maker on the outside is is uh and there were some I think I'm ready to cut bait. Yeah, there there were Oof. a couple of passes that I thought this is a good contested catch pass. You're giving your your wide receiver an opportunity to make that catch if he's a good wide receiver and it, and it looked uh not close. Like he turned his body weirdly and got one hand on the ball. Uh, you know, it was just – I was really disappointed. By so you were with Harry. me on that? I am 100% with you. Yeah, I mean, 10 targets for Demir Bird in the offense. Nikhil Harry had six of them. 
Uh, I don't know. It, it's just there's really not a yeah. lot that you want from the Patriots' offense right now. I mean, Julian Edelman is someone that obviously is going to be rostered because he's been good for a long time, but he's disappointing. James White is a running back who catches the ball, so he can be relevant. But until Cam gets back, and then once he comes back, it's just him that I want. I don't really invest right now in the Patriots' offense. And uh, the update on Cam Newton, he has been symptom-free for a couple days. Uh, I don't think he's ever had symptoms. Right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just giving the update. I don't – They nope. said – I think I've heard asymptomatic. Not not a doctor, but – so it seems like that once he – you know, once he clears and gets the, the double negative test, I'm just saying like it didn't get in his lungs. It's not affecting him that way of, of putting him down for the count. So once he clears and is no longer able to transmit the virus, he would be right back in the lineup. Is that a possibility for next week? I don't I, believe so. I think you have to have 10 days of, of no symptom free, which would put the timeline one more week past. I was thinking about that, and uh, I had bad thoughts. I was like, man, if they if they tried to like delay that game, get a little Tuesday night football, get Cam Newton back in there. <laughs> uh, if anyone would do it. That's why it I thought it. It was like Bill's like, oh, I'm not feeling good. They'd figure it Can out. Can we get the Tuesday night game, please? <laughs> After what we saw on the field from uh, Hoyer and Stidham. Look, the fantasy footballers are prepared. You can go to TuesdayNightFootball.com. We're ready. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. Um, Julio Jones. Oh, yeah. Calvin Ridley. Uh, what? Matt so, Ryan. Matt Ryan was a player that I, I, I was really excited about early in the week, and then you, you saw, oh, no. You might not want to play Matt Ryan if he doesn't have Julio, if he doesn't have Calvin Ridley. But he, he had them, Jason. But he didn't, apparently. It was the weirdest thing. So, obviously, first half he has Julio, um, and it's still limited. They were they were monitoring him and not just uh, letting him be out there all the time. And he was okay. In, in that first half, I think Julio was fine. Uh, Julio tweaked something at the very end of the first half did not come back in the game that is very concerning yes um I want to talk about that more in a minute but the weird thing to me was Calvin Ridley let me read you a list of players and then you try to figure out what they have in common mm. uh Zacchaeus oh, Hurst the Blake, little man Jones Smith Gage Hill Gurley Keith Smith we've got two Smiths in here mm-hmm those, I'm going to guess they all outperformed Calvin Ridley. Those are all players that had receptions from Matthew Ryan. Oh, man. It was oh, man. really bizarre. Watching the game and, and how Ryan looked, it looked like he was legitimately playing without those players, even when they were on the field. I couldn't wrap my head around it. And I don't know if that's a testament to the Green Bay Packers defense, and they just took out you know, their, their best options, or if Matt Ryan was just rattled, I, I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, he misses Julio, real Julio, not injured Julio. And so, yeah, we'll have to talk about the long-term situation for both of those players. Calvin Ridley has been the number one fantasy wide receiver, and this is a very extreme example of Jason's, you know, analysis where he's looking at the variance that even the great wide receivers have. Now, a goose is not something you expect from your – from this, your star. This was the classic Mike Evans. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was bad. And and I took a poll on Twitter because I was curious. Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, who'd you rather have as your quarterback for your franchise? What do you think the results of that poll was? Wow. Oh, that's interesting. That um, is really interesting. I think this is just felt like they, a fan saying, which quarterback do you want? I would rather the have The question Carson. was, which would you rather have as your home team's quarterback? Yeah, Carson Wentz. Is what you believe the poll answer is? Let what I believe this. the poll answer is, and is also my answer. I think the poll. I the, think the, the poll would have said Matt Ryan. The poll was 70 30. Ooh. With over 14,000 votes, 70 30 Matt Ryan. Wow. I'm factoring age into mine. Um, I don't know I'm if factoring that's... Uh, quarterback play into mine. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Todd Gurley was at the lone bright spot with two touchdowns, 16 oh, man. for 57. By the way, uh, trade Todd Gurley. <laughs> immediately yeah he doesn't I, I get it he got the two touchdowns he came through with a fantasy day he does not look like Todd Gurley this is this is a guy who is the cliff is here and he's passed you want to know one of his best attributes though this season how not Ito Smith he is 
Yeah, that's I mean, one of the things that stands out to me is how much he's not Edo Smith in this offense. It seems like they're monitoring, you know, his knee, and they don't want to overwork him. But every time they put Edo Smith in the game, it's like they're trying to stop their drives. When at least when they hand the ball off to him, if he's in there and they don't use him, then at least it's ten on eleven football, and you have a chance. Let me end with the best. Save the best for last. Robert Tanyan. Six for 98 and three oh, man. touchdowns. Oh, now, man. Did you see all the pictures of him, best friend George With Kittle? George Kittle, yeah. And both of them wearing those those sweet hats on the sideline and wearing yep. the man buns. Mike, yeah. how do you feel about this? Man bun check. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm all in. If, okay. you want, if you want to rock the man bun, absolutely. Get that thing up. Wear Is that it. up in his fantasy production? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> well, it's not hurting him right now. 98 I mean. and three touchdowns. I mean, we talked about the idea of starting a Packers tight end, and we said, well, Lewis, Mar Mercedes Lewis had two, what, a touchdown last week, and we also had uh, Sternberger get involved. Tanyan's the guy. Uh, apparently. I mean, the dude got tackled on while running around, got back up, and then scored a touchdown on that play. It was amazing. How much is Tanyan? How much is Falcons? I, I think you also have now, to 90, add the, 10 Falcons. The <laughs> recipe in addition to that is Alan Lazard yes. and Devontae Adams being out and then a, a definitely a, a healthy dash of the fact that Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback. It was it was a perfect storm for uh, Tanya. The, the great news, sorry, Jay, the, the great news is for Aaron Rodgers here that if he's missing his top option, you have at least somebody else who will step up. Yeah, yes. and it's not... Mark was Valdez no, Scantling. No, it is not. In fact, nor will we, it ever be. We talked. We talked about this before the game. I was a little upset when it seemed like the taking it up to one hundred was good because he he had the shot. I was really sad when Lazard went out because he is so clearly not a one that if you're going to guard him with the the best fenders, he's he's just flat out not good enough. Before we move on, I see you ready to push this button. I do want to. I want to circle back to Julio. Okay. I am super worried about Julio. Like, like I personally am looking at maybe trading trade? him for 75 cents on the dollar to someone who will take the name. I mean, this is a, this is an older wide receiver who's dealt with a hamstring problem from before the season that's now re-aggravated it. We're in mid-season. How many more weeks are you going to miss? And then when he comes back, are you going to be able to play him? Now, I'm maybe he helps win a championship for someone in weeks 15 16 you know hopefully not 17 hopefully your championships aren't in week 17 but I think you're going to have a really rough stretch I mean you you look at I mean we had so many conversations before the season about well AJ Green's the same age as Julio well Julio's awesome he's been dominant he's looked great entirely but when you're older and you're injured it's not as easy to come back so I'm just uh, do you guys share my concern, or do you not because Julio's been so unfathomably dominant? It's a compelling argument when you when you take the the Falcons as a whole, Calvin Ridley's uh, you know kind of emergence, and then the injury in the middle of the season. I mean, last year Devontae Adams won people championships, but he missed a four game stretch, came back and gave you nothing, and then you finally got the production. That could be the Julio situation. You might have him out for what? Two more weeks. So let's put this into actionable advice, Jason. So you're, if I'm reading what you're saying right, if you are a average team or an average to a losing team right now, you have you've got one win, you've got two wins. You would trade away Julio Jones right now. Try see if you can make something happen. But then, if you were, let's say you're four and zero, oh, sure, and, and you got depth, are you taking on the risk? putting Julio Jones on your bench and hoping that he comes through later. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a uh, a good trade for both teams in that type of a situation where you need wins. Julio's not going to give it to you right now. Julio's still great, but it's going to be a while, I believe. So, yeah, I think that's a, an actionable piece of advice. If you're 2-2, two and two, are you trading Julio Jones for Odell Beckham Jr.? Yeah. Yeah, I would trade. I mean, I don't think the Odell right. Beckham Jr. Oh, uh, manager is going to trade him for uh, a currently injured Julio, but if I could do that, I would do that in a heartbeat. Okay, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, it was breaking news yesterday. Nick Chubb, short-term IR with an MCL sprain. Everything I'm reading says Nick Chubb could be pushing a more like 
five to six week timeline, not a three week timeline. Oof. Yeah, it, it's not like the short term IR is a minimum of three, but that does not mean he's back at three. This is a six week injury. Do teams think it's a guarantee they're back in three? That'd be nice, right? Like, <laughs> minimum of three. Uh, Chubb could, they have like a bye week lining up where he could be out till week 10. Austin Eckler, a grade two hamstring strain. I've never yeah. seen an injury quite like this one. Um, expected to miss four to six weeks, but he's getting a second opinion. He's also a tough, a tough guy. It's just, I, I, it can only be so tough. You can't put your hamstring back on the bone. Yeah. I, I mean, this is as good of news as I could have hoped for. I mean, I put the odds of season ending at about 90 plus percent. So if, if you can get him back in a couple months, then fantastic. All right. Uh, we have LaShawn McCoy with an ankle sprain. Are you actually looking into Keyshawn Vaughn right now? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's a waiver wire show. Okay. I, I need to – I took a little poll, so I know this is appropriate. The Texans have fired head coach, GM, president, owner, <laughs> uh, member, season ticket holder. <laughs> play caller. Play caller. Bill O'Brien. Uh-huh. And I asked, I asked the Houston fans, okay. I said, are we happy? And they said, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Here's the problem. <laughs> oh, yeah, dance the guy. <laughs> <laughs> they are thrilled. Yeah, I mean, look. Oh, it they is, are pleased. <laughs> I think it is good for your franchise to not have uh, Bill O'Brien being your general manager, your head coach, he has not done great things there. But look at this from a dynasty fantasy roster perspective, right? The new general manager is is inheriting a team from a bad former manager. Right. And those things take time to turn around. Now, thank goodness you've got Deshaun Watson. Yes. That will help tremendously but you know you've got a team that's 0-4 and it doesn't have its first or second round pick this year what GM wants to go into that job it actually concerns me a little bit from a functional head coaching standpoint Bill O'Brien had taken over the head coaching or the play calling this past week but just philosophically with David Johnson one of the things we leaned on was David Johnson's going to get all the work because it's Bill O'Brien and that's his former recipe for success maybe you see a little bit more of a committee I'm not sure it's it's going to be some work. I mean, Bill O'Brien won exactly zero games without DeAndre Hopkins. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hopkins is a good dude, but he, he had to have smirked just a little bit that morning. Yeah, he probably did. All right. LaVisca Chenault, somebody I really like yeah. this week, dealing with a hamstring injury. Uh, hamstrings, man. Hamstrings. Hello. I, I <laughs> just <laughs> – it's me, hamstring. Um. I, Big summer blowout. I just why can't scientists and doctors go into the preventative <laughs> ACL and hamstring care? Oh, you just want them to fix it. I don't fix want them it. to fix the broken one. I want them to stop it from getting broke. What if you like you know that uh, flex seal? Oh yeah, the oh, the, yeah. The, the, the spray the, the can? tape. Do you yeah. put the tape on the back of the leg? No, yeah. I want the spray can. Okay. What if you just sprayed the back of your legs every single right before the game? You know how Alvin Kamara tapes up his arms? I've seen Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Those spray shoes, they, yeah, they works. work. <laughs> I, the dude's on a boat, man. He's floating just fine. Yeah. Put that I've on your seen, hamstring. I've seen Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. That's my factual basis. Steve, uh, real quick, Cam Akers is going to return in Week Five. Ryan Fitzpatrick will start in Week Five. The fact that's news, though. It mm -hmm. makes it interesting with Tua potentially making a start at some point. Sam Darnold, not playing to play Sam Darnold in week five. Oh. So Joe Flacco against the Cardinals in what could be – we won't be here the next week. If no. We, if the Cardinals lose to Joe Flacco and the Jets – Guys, you got it. we just got to get ready. We're done. Oh, it's, it's happening. A, <laughs> it's Brooks. Brooks is sitting here at the table by himself, uh. and um, we're done. Cardinals yeah. are going to win that game, guys. That's what worry. people you, keep Brooks. telling me, and I have no confidence. Thank you, Brooks. And in really important news, the Jets waved Kalen Balazs. Oh, so no. Gore Balazs. Oh, the wall, no. The wall is – The wall Jason has been brings torn the down. slide whistle back out. But also, Kalen Balazs being released speaks heavily to that Le'Veon Bell will, in fact, return uh, for the Jets That's this week. That's a good week. point. That's a good point, Mike. Before we move on to the waivers, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. The best body trimmer on the market. They got a whole bunch of other things to make sure that you are keeping your body in absolute 
tip-top grooming shape. They got the performance packages. It is the best value that Manscaped has to offer. Included in it, they got the Weed Whacker ear, nose hair trimmer. You know, look. It, it works well. Nose hairs, ear hairs. Fellas. Why do they grow so fast? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, but you got to take care of it. I'm I'm seeing some fellas that are they're not paying attention to the nose here. You think once you get into the mid 30s, I don't need to worry about this. Yes, you do. No, they're breakouts. Don't, yeah, you're, you're, breakout candidates. Your nose hairs are creeping me out. They're <laughs> no no one likes looking at your nose hairs. Yeah, they're creeping everybody out. Take care of it. And they look. Manscaped's got a proprietary skin safe technology. It helps prevent nicks, snags, tugs, things you don't want when you're when you're grooming the body. Man, the lawnmower 3.0. It. It is, like I said, it takes it is, care of it. It is the best body trimmer on the market. I have enjoyed Manscaped products now for quite some time. They never let me down. And you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. Dude, take care of <laughs> Take care Take of them nose care hairs. Of the nose hair. And also, Foot Clan, this episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. This year, we've been doing a new segment. We're taking it up to 100 players of the week every Thursday. And right now, we're in a battle because we checked the scoreboard. And, Mike, you're 2-2 two and two on the season. I am. Hunter, Hunter Renfro was close. You're almost 3-1. You're almost he but was. But you're not. He was. Thank you, Jason. He took it up to 85. He did. <laughs> and, uh, we're not going to talk about Marquez Valdez-Scantling. We're just going to talk about I am also 2-2. Two and two and, and yeah, Andy. Our, our dude's got flakes for sure. Here's the, who took it up to 100. Melvin Gordon. Yes, I mean, he, he was did. the running back three on the week. Great call, Andy. That pulls you up to 2-2. Two and two, And we are tied going into week yeah. five. Where, where do you think Melvin Gordon was before that final play? I mean, he, oh, he was already he was going to be a hundred. But I'm saying it. Uh, he was like the he, running back, fifteen or he, so. That got him to a thousand. He was at a hundred. That got him to a thousand. It's just so insane. Of you know the play call is they're going to give the ball to Melvin Gordon. He's going to run it up the middle because all they want to do is waste the clock. And then he just bounces uh, off of everybody <laughs> and rolls out. And you see some. that sometimes though, because the whole defense is up. Yes. If you break through that first line, you're gone. Eh. We'll see how it goes this week. I'm sure I'll take it up to 100. Take your hair up to 100 with Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. Pick yours up today, and check out this Thursday's episode to hear our up to 100 picks of the week. Put me in, coach. All right. We're in the buys. We're in the buys. Week five buys. The Lions, the Packers, Kenny Galladay, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones. Mm, MBS man. taking a week off after that heavy workload. Aaron Jones, man, I am the the regret. So much regret of yeah. doubting Aaron Jones. He's so uh, he's so good. You know, people debate value of running back, yes. running back contracts, and they do it for good reason. You've seen situations where teams lose that prolific running back. They don't they don't lose a beat. Christian McCaffrey, but there there are a handful of players. Where when you watch them play football, you say no one can replace that player. Alvin Kamara, mm -hmm. Dalvin Cook, mm -hmm. agreed. And Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Jones. Jones. Aaron Jones is in that list. I will give a lot of credit to Jamal Williams. He has he looks he significantly does? better. Whatever work he did in the offseason, took it to one hundred on that. Um week six buys coming up. It's the Raiders, Patriots, Saints, and Seahawks for next week. So keep that in mind when you're making uh adjustments on the waiver wire. Let's start with the wide receiver position when we're talking waiver pickups. We always start with drop candidates, players that, uh, you know, you as listeners, you bring them up on Twitter, on Instagram. You want to know, you want permission, really. You want permission to drop a big name most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. because you want to go after the, the newest waiver wire pickup, but you don't know if it's okay to let somebody go. So I'm going to bring up some names at wide receiver. Okay. You say if you're willing to let them go for some of the guys on the block this week. Marvin Disappointment Jones. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, a hold phenomenal. on, you're trying to sway the jury over there. That, that yeah. was a little biased. Erroneous. Objection. <laughs> Leading the witness. Uh, yeah, you, you just cut him. All right. You said yes as well? Yeah. He's yeah, a I great agree. best ball player, though. He'll have a big three touchdown game coming soon. Still waiting for it. AJ yep. Green. Cut. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. T.Y. Hilton. Cut. Yep. I'm not cutting T.Y. Hilton. No? Um, I, I, don't, I don't blame you. He's not a... I mean, not I mean, yet. The other two... 
I mean, first of all, if I've got someone with the name of AJ Green, I'm going to try to trade him first. Of course. Before I cut of him. We, we need to say that because that's good advice. Um, people will trade for big names, but he, I mean, my number one waiver pickup, I'm skipping ahead, is his teammate, T. Higgins. But if I had to roster T. Higgins or A.J. Green, it's going to be T. Higgins. Yeah, and I'm I'm close on Hilton. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm very close. I just want I want them in a game where they're not dominating from the beginning of the game and Their see what defense happens. Defense is so good. It's mm -hmm. very good. Uh, Brandon Cooks cut. Yeah, you can you can say Sayonara. Michael Gallup. No. No. Okay. Darius Slayton. No. Nope. Hanging on, especially this week. Yes. DJ Moore. No. Yeah, those three guys I'm I'm continuing to roster. If they it, I mean put it this way, if those three Gallup, Slayton, and DJ Moore were on the waivers, I would pro I would definitely put DJ Moore and Michael Gallup ahead of all the other wide receivers that we're gonna be discussing today. So yeah, they they should be rostered. I think one of the reasons why I'm okay holding on to Hilton for another week is because I'm really not that enthusiastic about the wide receiver pickups this week. It's a good point. The the last week was exciting with the triple rookie breakout. Yeah. Justin Jefferson, great pickup. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm glad yes. we said to go hard in the paint after you didn't Justin tell, Jefferson. I, you didn't tell me to go hard enough because I, I missed out <laughs> on him. I was really close. I spent 35 fab. He went for 45, and I'm super disappointed. I love that Andy Holloway, uh, host of Fantasy Football Podcast, is blaming his co-hosts. For not telling him to bid higher. <laughs> That's right. But but for the record, if I had gotten him, I would have been taking the credit for giving myself the advice mm -hmm. to that's, go hard enough. That's fantasy football, baby. That's right. Uh, <laughs> you're right, though, Jason. There was the rookie breakouts last week and other ones in the waiver wire pickups this week. But I'm really not, I'm not that excited about all of these options. You look at T. Higgins, all right? Well, T. Higgins, he seems to be further integrated into this offense. Super impressed with Joe Burrow. Seven targets, four for 77, really seems to be the guy outside of Tyler Boyd that's going to get the target share now. Has Baltimore in Baltimore this week. Has the Colts in Indianapolis the next week. He's probably at the top of my list for long-term value, but I'm not actively starting him, which means I'm not going to spend a ton of fab. Yeah, I completely agree. This is this is a player that hopefully, based on our advice, you already had picked up because he was kind of our our number two pickup last week. Um, but coming into this week, it really is a matter of look at your roster and say, is this player I need to plug into my lineup because I lost player X, Y, or Z? Or is this just he's out there, he should be rostered? Because if it's a player you need to pick up and play, I'm between two players. Hmm, interesting. I have my number one. Who is your... So I like Russell Gage a lot. I know it was a disappointing game. Okay. He was just back um, from the concussion this week. But Carolina and Minnesota are... And then Detroit is the upcoming schedule for Russell Gage. I think Julio's going to be out. He, to me, is a, is a great... If you need to pick up a player and plug him in your lineup and hope for 10 points... Russell Gage would be the guy. The other one is Scotty Miller. Scotty Miller. Yep. He's I mean, my number one pickup. He's been getting it done. And if you, you know, we, we keep going back to it, but if he just caught the touchdown pass that hit him in the hands on his down week, then he's pretty much been good yeah, every he, single if week. If he caught that, I'd be three and one on my taking into 100. You would. And, and look, Chris. Thank you, Scotty. <laughs> Chris God was not going to play this week, is he? I mean, it's a sh it's a short week. No, he's got the hamstring problem. I thought it was. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I thought it was a multi week. Yeah. We already knew that Godwin was going to miss. Correct. So, yeah, Scott, I'm, Scotty Miller. I'm with you, Jason. Scotty Miller and Russell Gage are my. Those are my top two pickups. So I guess you said T Higgins might be your number one. He would be three for me. Yeah, looking at this, I mean, this is again. If I need, if I needed to start this player now, T Higgins would be my number three. Because I would rather start Russell Gage and Scotty Miller ahead of T. Higgins. Yeah, Scotty, Scotty is at the top of my list. LaVisca Chenault, I know he's dealing with the hamstring injury. I couldn't have been more impressed with him this past week. And he has Houston, Detroit. He's number two for me behind Scotty Miller. That's fair. Uh, but I do want to monitor that hamstring injury this week because he's a must start this week. Yes. If he's fine, if he's okay. Uh, he's not Julio Jones, Jason. He's very young. His hamstring is... That's it's a really okay. solid it's really solid point. I now mean, does a ham does the voice get higher as you get older for the hammy? Yeah, I mean this, I don't know. It's the opposite of growing up, uh, right? 
Yoo-hoo, no, yeah. it doesn't. Or so is Lavisca? <laughs> no, they're all they're all high. We're pitched. all hamstrings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Brandon Ayuk is maybe on some people's uh, lists. He is an impressive athlete. He is still very difficult for me to start. Yeah, I don't think you can start Ayuk. The I did have the thought though of once Debo is back, is Debo going to have an Ayuk in problem? Yeah, I mean, I I I, I agree with what you're saying in the sense that he's playing essentially that that Debo role we saw last year. Are, and, and are Debo we just was, splitting that role up? Yeah, two, Debo the was rounds back. go back and forth between Debo and Ayuk. Right, exactly. And Debo was back this this last uh, this last week. He played on thirty four percent of snaps, um, but he's going to be more integrated. And yeah, because of both of those players, I'm kind of out on each of them. Here's I'm more. I would rather have Debo by by yes, a lot. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I don't think, and I don't think you can start Debo this week. Yet though, I I need to see more than thirty for thirty four percent of the snaps, and then a if you're looking for a stash player at the wide receiver position, McCole Hardman yes. is still available in about in more than half yes. of leagues. He has he's taken to Marcus Robinson's job. He's Kareem Hunt. He is Kareem sure. Hunt at wide receiver. Here's what I mean. I would love to know. This is a player who is himself outstanding and electric, but he's not the starter essentially like Kareem Hunt wasn't. You can play McCole Hardman right now as a backup, he, just like you could play Kareem Hunt. Now, obviously, it's it's Kareem Hunt light. Kareem Hunt was dominating as a backup week in and week out and getting enough touches to be confident in him. You're not as confident in McCole Hardman, but every, every single start can have a touchdown for McCole Hardman, as he's had the last two weeks. And should something happen, a la this Nick Chubb injury that puts – McCall Hardman, you know, next to Tyree Kill on a regular basis out on the field. I I really like McCall Hardman as as a you know as a deeper stash play if you need to, but uh, hopeful insurance policy as well. Yeah, it's kind of a philosophical thing. Do you want a target type of uh, fill in for your team, like a Greg Ward who might go out and get seven, eight, nine, ten targets, or do you want to take a shot on one big play with in, McCall Hardman? In general, I want the targets. In specificity. With Greg Ward at Pittsburgh, then Baltimore, no thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think the first guys we mentioned, this, the, you know, the Scotty Miller mm -hmm. and Russell Gage and T. Higgins, those are up, and then McCall Hardman. But none of these guys like super inspire me. So you know, I'm, I'm. Are I'm you not chasing putting... Traquan P Smith points? Uh, no, I mean, on the Saints, like, I I expect Michael Thomas to be back this week, and they're playing the Chargers. Chargers. I get it. I Tom Brady threw five touchdowns, but they are still a solid defense. And then you have the bye week. Traquan Smith is just a really deep league ad for me, if if at all. All right, let's look at the running back position on the waiver wire this week. A couple of drop candidates that have been coming up on Twitter, Instagram. J.K. Dobbins? No. No. Yeah, Dobbins is somebody that should be rostered. Yes. I don't think it's an absolute for every team. If you need to go get somebody to play, Dobbins is not that option. I mean, that's truly whatever name you're going to say is, is is probably the case for running back because if there's someone who has the potential to be involved at some point at running back, then they need to be rostered by someone in the mm -hmm. league. Um, I see you're about to bring up Zach Moss. Like My initial instinct is, oh, yeah, cut, cut bait. I, I didn't want Zach Moss... Anyways, but at the same time, he's one of the – I mean, I'm picking up guys at the running back position that are seemingly, you know, feels like a backup to the backup sometimes. Just just your wait and hope. And, and so in that category, Zach Moss should be rostered. But I, I, I would much prefer the waiver options we're about to talk about. Yeah, I would rather have Moss on my roster than Dobbins right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fair. All right, waiver wire pickups – that you're focusing on this week. I think that there are kind of, yeah. I'll say three, I guess it's four names, but three situations. There's the Chargers situation with Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson. There's the Cardinal situation with Kenyon Drake, though we think he'll be back out there. So Chase Edmonds probably rostered in, in a lot of leagues. But um, And then there's the Brown situation with, Nick Chubb missing time, and to Ernest Johnson, who was an Amer uh, Alliance of American football star <laughs> that they signed and came in and had a big week last week. How are you prioritizing those, or, or do you include anybody else in that kind of 
category. Sure. So if we're if we're talking through all of the situations, uh, I would pr- I would be prioritizing the Chargers, and I think it's still Joshua Kelly would be the the top player I would be going after. He's not. He is the least available of the players that we have mentioned right here at the running back position. It was a bad game for Joshua Kelly. I get it, but he's going to have a ton of opportunity with Austin Eckler out. But Justin Jackson will also be on the field, and he projects more as a pass catcher. Like he he has that skill set, and he is excellent at it. He's not Austin Eckler, but he's he's good at it, and will have to fill that Austin Eckler pass catching role. So both of these guys are in play, and I I believe I would prioritize Justin Jackson over Dearness Johnson from the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I think that's where the question is: is is Justin Jackson versus Dearness Johnson? I go Dearness Johnson. Uh, the upcoming schedule is not fantastic. We just talked about how great Indianapolis Colts, their defense has just been playing outstanding, and after that is Pittsburgh. So that's not great, but I think this is a you know a, a six week injury for Nick Chubb. Dearness Johnson passed the eyeball test in very small sample size, but when we were watching him play this last week uh, in relief, he looked great. He ran well, and this is a team that has upgraded the offensive line. Stefanski's coming in with a nice run scheme. I believe in the scheme. So I think I, I, I would go Joshua Kelly, then Dearness Johnson. Okay. Um, I'm also sad, I mean super sad to see that Chase Edmonds roster percentages is 25% in ESPN, 35% in Yahoo. I, I unfortunately have a lot of Kenya Drake shares. <laughs> I have not seen Chase Edmonds on a single waiver in any league ever that I am playing in, but if he's out there, he has to be rostered. Yeah, I absolutely. Absolutely. But he, he would is... be behind those guys to me. How do you have him, Andy? Are you going are you attacking the Chargers or the Browns? I think I'm attacking the charge. Joshua Kelly's number one. Okay. Uh, and I believe that's one of those talent situations where I think Joshua Kelly is a more talented, well-rounded running back than Justin Jackson is. And so just based on eye test of, of seeing Jackson more last year and, and Kelly this year. So that's where I put the priority. I do agree with Jason. Yesterday we were kind of talking about the Brown situation and, and like surprised that Dearness Johnson got so much work and, well, is the, it was Kareem Hunt's groin kind of why they, you know, and the fact it was 41 to 14, is that why you saw more Dearness Johnson than we expected? It's really what Jason said. It's a scheme situation. Both, it's not going to be all Kareem Hunt. They can put another no. player in, especially after he has a debut of 13 for 95 or whatever it was. So I think you will be able to flex Dearness Johnson as soon as this week if you're in a desperate situation, which could be a you lot know, of people. I mean, would you rather flex Chase Edmonds or would you rather flex Dearness Johnson De- this week? Dearness Johnson. I mean, uh, Kenyon Drake is not injured. He he had the wi- – this is an update we didn't we didn't give. Uh, he left the game with about three minutes left to go, did uh, Kenyon Drake, but that was after a hit to the chest. He had the wind knocked out of him. If the game had been longer, he would have came back in the game. He was not injured. He was already back at practice. Um, now – is I mean, he overweight and slow or any other problem? I mean, you know, we're unhappy with Kenyon Drake, but he is not currently injured. Well, let me let me tell you something. Chase uh, Edmonds, six targets in week four. Do you know how many targets Kenyon Drake has on the year? Oh, man, like it's, six? It's five. Five. Goodness. Five targets on the season. Edmonds in this last game, if there is a little bit of a change of pace here against the Jets, Edmonds is very interesting as a flex. I, I certainly believe that the Arizona Cardinals are going to – that Cliff Kingsbury is going to take a look and make some changes. If you remember last season, the first four games of the year, the personnel groupings and the uh, methodology of the offense for the Arizona Cardinals completely changed. I mean, after week four, they went from running, you know, 11 personnel all the time to, to you know, very low – and so I was listening to Cliff Kingsbury talk um, just about how putrid the offense was and saying he needs to make changes. Now, that could be Chase Edmonds, but that could also be getting Kenyon Drake the ball in the passing game, which worked so well last year. Um, because we don't know, I, I would go Dearness. I, I had this thought as I was driving in, uh, you know, reflecting of I, I wasn't in on Hopkins. I was cons- I was concerned about the target share. Coming from Houston, moving over to Arizona, will he get the the same target share? Which that is a resounding yes. I was I was not correct, but 
in my process of factoring that in was Kenyon Drake is still going to be a 12 to 15% target share player. That's what happened. This, this is what has happened to Kenyon Drake is DeAndre Hopkins has come in and soaked up all his targets. Uh, and my, my final quick note here on why I am Justin Jackson over Dearness Johnson is Dontrell Hilliard is still on the Cleveland Browns. He was called up. He saw some work as well this past week. So my, I like what I saw from Dearness Johnson on Cleveland, but there, there is a scenario where it's Kareem Hunt and then these two guys are the cleanup work and they are splitting the cleanup work. Meanwhile, the Chargers, it's Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson. That's it. There's no one else involved. There is I, a high likelihood that the Browns are in very competitive ball games the next two weeks with the Colts and the Steelers. Therefore, you could see a higher proportion of Kareem Hunt in high value situations. I, 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 everything you two are saying makes complete sense. I like it. I don't disagree with any of it. That being said, I am going hard after Dearness Johnson. Okay. I'm, okay. I, 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 you know that that means obviously I'm also going hard after uh, Joshua Kelly. But unlike the wide receivers, where I'm like whatever, I'll, uh, you know, I'll let the waivers clear, or I'll put you know five percent of my budget on one of these guys. I am going to roster Joshua Kelly or Dearness Johnson, whatever that takes. If that's you know, because I don't, I don't think people are going super hard after these players. Not after Dearness Johnson, just fami name familiarity. If I know it's a, it's a trickle down here. If if Cream Hunt, the groin, pro Dearness Johnson is like a top ten back, yeah, if, potentially in this offense because of how Stefanski's running it. They're the best running team in football. Yeah, I, I would I would certainly I mean I'm I'm going twenty five percent of my budget plus on Dearness Johnson. Oh wow. Oh wow. I guess I won't be competing. Other running backs that I'm looking at I mean like Latavius Murray, yeah. He, I think he just he happened to hit on the touchdown variance this week. Uh Damian Harris, we've kind of already discussed him. He is you pick him up and you put him on the bench. You can stash Keyshawn Vaughn now. And yes. Keyshawn Vaughn is the player I wanted to bring up specifically because the opportunity is here. I mean he he caught a touchdown, which was nice and not really expected here from the rookie from Tampa Bay. But do you remember? You remember Parks and Rec? Yeah, I mean, you remember Terry, Larry, Jerry, yes. right? Yes. Oh, I hate you know that how no guy. matter Everyone when you pan him. the camera to to Terry, he would spill coffee on himself, or he'd trip over something, or he'd slam his shirt in the door. Sure, that's Ronald Jones. Yes, yeah. Ronald Jones. When you put him on a pedestal, when you set him out in front of where the eyeballs are on him. I mean, I I have, I have openly defended like, oh, his catch percentage is better than Peyton Barber. Three times he had the most atrocious drops where I can't imagine what Bruce Arians is thinking. And then if it's not an atrocious drop, it's a blitz pickup. If it's not a blitz pickup, it's a fumble. He can't get out of his own way. <laughs> the reason he had a high catch percentage was because they didn't throw him the ball outside of designed screens where it's like he knows this is happening now with Brady he's out running a route and they're not sure what's going on and he's getting an unexpected pass you're saying he needs to be saying in his head catch it catch it catch it catch it catch it beforehand I'm saying that's what he's already doing and he needs to stop and just catch the ball and run he's going oh, oh no oh I gotta catch oh but shoot on top of that of, dang it Terry of the, <laughs> the Ronald Jones uh Donald <laughs> drops and uh, Ronald Jones is still the starting running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that's I, I don't I'm not projecting Vaughn's coming in and taking over. But Leonard Fournette, the the ankle, this is like this has been a long term problem for Leonard Fournette. That's why he was out. I think he's gonna miss a, a few weeks here as they try to heal this thing up. Shady McCoy, the other backup for Tampa Bay, he has a grade two ankle sprain. It's Ronald Jones and Keyshawn Vaughn. Vaughn is now not just a better pass catcher than Ronald Jones. He is necessary I'm telling you, to if, this offense. If if Ronald Jones drops another two passes the way he did this past week, Tom Brady's going to walk over and say, don't put him in the game. Mm -hmm. Because Brady, he doesn't want his completion percentage disintegrated by Ronald Jones. He doesn't want the drive to stall I'd rather out. have Kishon Vaughn right now on my bench over J.K. Dobbins if I had to pick between the two. Okay, that's fair. So they're in the same category, though. Um. By the way, Mike, I just wanted to get a, a temperature. The Joshua Kelly or the Justin Jackson fab okay. spin. What's the percentage of your budget you're looking at? Uh, it depends on your your need, but so uh, uh, I mean, to <laughs> to my to my detriment, what Jason's writing something down. This was a personal oh, note, oh Andrew gosh, Holloway. I'm sorry, but I... you're now exposed and you're now sharing it oh, with the entire Foot Clan oh, and me. This Look, is so all right, great. all right. This here's so great. here's the deal. 
we are fantasy football analysts. We do this for a career, for a living. <laughs> yeah. We are also fantasy football players first. Um, we make notes to ourselves. We are giving. We're and putting in our advice. own waiver pickups today. Absolutely, I got to put my waiver pickups. I have in. Brooks do mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I made a note. I've got Dearness Johnson written down here on my little uh, boogie board, and I wrote "get him," <laughs> and I squared it with a box because I I'm making a personal note. I want to get Dearness Johnson on my team. Oh, I love it! You're and then Andy sneaks day. over. And I just took a little peek. I didn't know, you know, maybe it was something show related. Mm, yeah, maybe. What, what's funny? So then, shoot, you're get asking him. me about Justin get Jackson, him. and like to my detriment because the listener league. They are listening. I mean, I will be – because I have a very strong running back need on that team, and I think I have, like – it's a 14-teamer. I already went hard in the paint after Mike Davis, so my budget is low. I've got some, like, 30-something fab left. I'll probably drop the – All of it? All, all, nearly all of it except for one or two uh, points or bucks, whatever, uh, remaining. It, I'm going after – those guys all right tight end drop candidates from twitter and ig are you dropping evan ingram oh I, yeah I, I 10 targets i'm not dropping him. Yeah, I, not, not with what's out there at tight end well and the match this week goodness gracious I'm, this I'm week could be great it. tyler higby no i'm not dropping tyler higby no i i even with the reality that i think it and i were on before the season that has kind of come true where Sure, it's not a Higby thing. It's Higby and ever and and ever and, but that being said, the tight ends are so crappy. Twenty first, first, twenty first, thirty first. Yeah, tight ends are so crappy that I'm still going to keep a tight end that has the potential to have first um, a couple more times this season. Hayden Hurst. Well, yeah. How many targets did he have last night? It wasn't great. Had, I think he had quite a few. It, it, yeah, I mean. Target wise is okay. Six. But so he had six targets, four for fifty one. No, I'm not dropping him. Yeah, you're not dropping him, but that man, in, in a matchup where Calvin Ridley has zero receptions, Julio Jones leaves the game for a half, and you're Hayden Hurst, you're only coming through with four receptions. That's it, it, it's why I was Hayden hesitant, I'm telling yeah. you. Because he was never he had never done it yet. Right. So um no, I wouldn't I wouldn't be dropping any of those players because it's on, you're only dropping them for somebody else. Now if you if you could drop Hayden Hurst for for there's only one tight end Robert Tunyon? He's on by. He's on by though. That's the problem. That's right. Yeah. There, there's only one tight end on our list that I would be I'll make the move from is well, it, those three. Is there's, it Blake Jarwin? Yeah, it is Blake Jarwin, actually. Yeah, I thought so. Uh with a, a pin name. Yes. AKA Dalton Schultz uh from the Dallas Cowboys, who it four for seventy two and one, eight targets. He came through again. Delicious matchups on the docket here for the Dallas Cowboys, the Giants, Arizona, Washington. The role is secure. They are going to have to throw the ball 40 to 50 times, apparently. And Dalton Schultz, just, oh, man. Mike's it's, internal dialogue with Dalton Schultz is hilarious because, like, Dalton Schultz deserves actual credit as a human being. Yes, mm -hmm. he does. He, he's and getting yet, it done. And yet uh, Mike can only see the shadow of what, Blake Jarwin could have been in this offense because I think we'd all admit Blake Jarwin's a more athletic tight end he, than Dalton Schultz is. He's a better offensive weapon, yes. Mike could be just basking in his own glory here, making the call on Blake Jarwin so early in the year. I, it, I but you really whiffed on it, Mike. What a failure. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> I can't be proven right. I can't be proven wrong. That's but right. I will say this. If Blake Jarwin were healthy, he would be the tight end five or higher right now. Okay. Uh, I, I can't argue with it. I have no way to do that. Uh, I have to say these things to I know, myself. I know. Now, what if the reality was that Dalton Schultz is better than we thought and they would actually be splitting time and neither one would be valuable? That's stupid. Don't say that. Okay. What about Jimmy Old as Alexander Graham Bell? <laughs> That's the newest line no. from... Every time we open our show, Doc, and Jimmy Graham's name is in here, he's got a new nickname from Kyle. I, I love it. The, like I said, Dalton Schultz, I'm in. I will pick him up. I will play him. If you can stash, if somehow you have a spot and you want to stash Robert <laughs> Tanya and Harding, uh, I would do it. I'll stash him, but that is it. You yeah. could probably stash him really cheap. Sure. Because of the bye week. I don't know. I think people will chase it. I, I don't think they'll recognize. Someone in every league is going to not recognize that he's on bye, pick him up, spin, You know, look for the drops afterwards. Also, speaking of the drops, this is a reminder to drop it like it's hot. Meaning Excellent. 
when the waivers run, look at who was dropped. I can flat out promise you that Kenyon Drake will be dropped in he'll be dropped in some leagues in, yeah. st- in plenty of leagues and so check but your not league. In my league Jason <laughs> yeah uh ch- that's yeah the that's, grumpy public, that's what yeah. they always say oh yeah. it would never happen and then they go check and and sure enough it's happened so look for you know it, not just Drake but whoever's been dropped and and see I will throw one last tight end name out it's a huge name it's Gigantor yeah, are I, you picking him up? I am fine. Like, if you yeah, My question for Mo Alley Cox is his name. From the Colts. Uh, my question for you, Jason, and for us was simply, is he is he real? Is he not just a fabrication of a fairy tale? He is, is he's he a, tall a tale, real yeah. option for fantasy players? Because it's one catch last I week. I think so, and here's why. Last week was terrible. Uh, first of all, you had uh, Trey Burton activated – Jack Doyle was out there, and he only ran – Mo Ali Cox only ran seven routes. So the process says, well, stay away. Mm-hmm. And so I'm fine with that. This isn't me telling everybody, go out and sign Mo Ali Cox now. We've been telling people that over the last several weeks when he had the opportunity. The opportunity is going down. That being said, he has proven himself to be a valuable weapon to this offense, and they haven't needed him. They've been in these games where they're just dominating fools, and so, yeah, he only ran seven routes. He ended up with a touchdown, and I'm looking at, like, you know, Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst is going to have way more targets, way more routes run, and at the end of the day, it's probably going to end up with, like, four for 40. So if I get my, like, one for 13 and a touchdown, I'm probably outscoring him. You are, but you could be zero. All right. That's fair. We got to move on. Defensive options this week. The Cardinals take on Joe Flacco and the Jets. Dallas takes on the Giants. The Giants offense is one of the worst things I've had to witness this year. Uh, Daniel Jones has to choose between throwing a pick or handing it to Devonta Freeman. That is not a good option in the offense. Dallas is such a bad defense, but I would still be I would be looking at getting a defensive score in this one as yeah, as a potential. That's fair. Houston against Jacksonville. Houston Will they rally? What, do we get the, the narrative? With Romeo the, Cornell? The narrative bump of new coach. No, I'm not interested. Okay. Jacksonville against Jackson Houston? Houston? No, Houston. I'm not interested. Kansas City against the Raiders? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. If they're out there, which they seem to be in ESPN leagues at least, Kansas City's an option. Let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. All right. Let's talk streaming quarterback options for the upcoming week with the waivers processing tomorrow. It was down to a few names for me, but I'll go with one that had a uh, an unexpected bye week, and that is Big Ben himself. Uh, gets the week off to head uh, to Philadelphia, take on the Eagles. He is uh, He's pretty rostered. But with the bye week, he was probably dropped in a lot of leagues. You have an opportunity to pick him up. Deontay Johnson with the concussion got the week an extra week off. His primary target. And Big Ben's had three solid games. This is the type of streamer I want as a fantasy player. If I have uh, Aaron Rodgers on bye, and I am looking for somebody that's not going to sink me, could give me his first huge game of the week, it's Big Ben against the Eagles. Yeah, if Big Ben is out there, he would be the pickup and the play. And I will say this. I, I see the roster percentages being a little bit high, but you know maybe it's anecdotal. But I know in the leagues I'm playing in, Big Ben was dropped a lot of places. I personally had to drop Big Ben because he wasn't playing football. So, yeah, he's out there, and if he is, he should be picked up, played ahead of uh, these other guys. But I'm going with Kirk Cousins. I like it. Set your phasers to at least stun. Yeah. Uh, because the matchup at Seattle is good, but more so the reason why is because of Justin, Justin Jefferson. Jefferson. Yes. I mean, you you have this offense coming into their own a little bit. Obviously, he wasn't fantastic this week, but two weeks ago he Are was. You talking a, about Justin Jefferson? No, I'm talking about Kirk Cousins. Oh. Um, Kirk Cousins is he's out there. He's available. You can get him in just about every league, and you know with Justin Jefferson with. Adam Thielen, you still have two good pass-catching tight ends, and Dalvin Cook, and Dalvin Cook is just yeah. as likely to have a 40-yard r- screen as he has a 40-yard carry that's taken to the house. Do you so, like those two sweet Patrick Mahomes touchdowns last night? <laughs> the one-foot touchdown passes? The old, I'm the so old, thankful to to Andy Reid for so many things. The tap pass? But the fact that he chooses to go the pass in front instead of behind and he gets two touchdowns out of it, Tyreek Hill and McCole it's, Hardman. It's amazing. It yeah. is. 
All right, uh, so Kirk Cousins, I, he was in consideration for me. I love the pick, Jason. And I'm gonna, I'm, I, this, I'm just throwing out Daniel Jones as well because I know it's I risky agree. business. I'm throwing him out. Yes, I know. <laughs> no, I'm throwing him right out into the garbage. I think he could have a monster game. All right, he could also. He, could, he is risky business. <laughs> yes, he is. He was very high variance. I'm throwing out uh, Teddy Bridgewater. He gets to take on Atlanta. We finally saw what a treat that is. Uh, we finally saw Teddy Bridgewater come through with a big fantasy day. 276 passing yards. And two touchdowns. That I mean, I know he had the rushing score, and it was nice to see Teddy Bridgewater finally running around to, I mean, years and years after the injury. But what's wild about Teddy Bridgewater, his touchdown percentage is still sitting at 2.8%. He is still underperforming in the touchdown category. Thanks, DJ Moore. <laughs> compared to the just the league average. And the Falcons are like, hold up so, a second. So I like Teddy Bridgewater a lot. I, he's probably in terms of available he's my favorite streamer jason threw out daniel jones and andy i don't think you like this one but i'm in with justin herbert versus the new orleans saints they i think that's gonna be a disaster so we can we yes. can uh disagree on that one we'll figure out a bet for that one but i, I, I think love he's a strong uh streaming candidate i love week. the player but when you're a when you're a rookie and you face sean payton's team a, a team with this kind of pedigree i know that they're hurting on the in the secondary but I don't trust Herbert to take advantage of it against them. So to risky business, do I want to play Daniel Jones or Justin Herbert? You got to go. Daniel I would go Jones Daniel Jones there. in that because situation because the upside of mm -hmm. both of these players. I think it, Daniel Jones could be the quarterback one. I don't know if Justin Herbert has that in him yet. All right, I like the Bridgewater pick though, Mike. I think that's a good one. Atlanta's defense. They look at Arizona to, and they aspire to Atlanta be Arizona's defense. Atlanta has lost six cornerbacks, and you might say, "But you don't play with six cornerbacks," and you are correct. So I had to check uh, the Oops. news this morning because I, Daniel, I mean Quinn. Quinn is on the list to be sure. out the door. I mean Dan Quinn. He's on the list to be O'Brien. He's on the list to be O'Brien, and so is Adam Gaze if he loses this next week. Although, do you keep a guy that can get you Trevor Lawrence? Do you not? I don't know the philosophy there. We want to thank Pristine Auction for sponsoring today's show. Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk. Uh, $77 yesterday on pristineauction.com. Devin Singletary went for $66 on Pristine Auction yesterday. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com, and uh, you can check out their hundreds of daily auctions. Get some sweet sports memorabilia. Maybe get a Kareem Hunt jersey to celebrate these upcoming weeks. Maybe. All right, that does it. Good luck on the waiver wire, and we'll be back with you tomorrow. We'll have a fantasy retirement ceremony. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.